Vince's reaction to his allegations, a big baby face turn for an AEW star, an update on Brian Danielson, and many more. Please don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. I'm KB the Mark from WVP TV, and this is the Wrestling Report for July 12th. Without further ado, let's cue that intro. I'm a visionary, revolutionary, I'm a visionary, revolutionary. AEW has booked a barbed wire death match between Chris Jericho and Eddie Kingston for the July 20th edition of Dynamite. The Jericho Appreciation Society will be above the ring in a shark cage to prevent them from interfering in the bout. Dave Meltzer discussed the crossover on Wrestling Observer Radio, noting that Discovery, which merged with Warner Media earlier this year to form Warner Brothers Discovery, wanted to do some kind of Shark Week gimmick match. Because you can't have live sharks around the ring or someone being thrown into a pool of sharks, they came up with the shark cage idea. Meltzer said, so we're going to have a bloodbath on TV. Well, they do that. The shark thing, I guess, is the gimmick having to do with Shark Week. Discovery asked them to do a tie-in, and so they came up with a match to do a tie-in. That's a week from Wednesday. Eddie Kingston has overcome a lot in his pro wrestling career and is over with the fans in AEW after making his promotional debut in July of 2020, where he faced off against Cody Rhodes for the TNT Championship. He impressed many, including AEW President Tony Khan, and signed with the company. Kingston is regarded as one of the best talkers in the promotion. Kingston was recently subjected to a lot of body shaming by fans who believe anyone with a beer gut can't be an athlete. Sean Waltman, took to Twitter to defend Kingston. Most of these criticisms come from people who don't have the first clue what makes someone a good athlete. FYI, it has zero to do with whether or not you can see their six pack. Salamander and I recorded a podcast about wrestling physique. This episode of the podcast focused heavily on the Kingston situation, so make sure to listen again tomorrow. Many of you saw Kevin Owens surprise Vancouver Canucks head coach Bruce Bordreau on the NHL Network. This clip also made headlines in wrestling circles because Owens stated that he is ready to return as soon as WWE is. Right now, it's in their hands, Owens said. Owens has been sidelined with a minor injury, but it appears that he will be back in the ring by the end of this month, if not sooner. Dave Meltzer stated on the Sunday night's main event podcast radio show that he believes Owens will return soon. AEW has posted footage that was recorded after last Wednesday's episode of Dynamite. The footage is of Brody King recovering after losing the interim AEW World Champion John Moxley. King is shown walking back up the aisleway. Malachi Black walks out, but then Sting and Darby Allen walk out onto the stage. You can hear Allen tell King that he earned the title shot against Moxley and he deserved to be in AEW. King earned the title shot by eliminating Allen on the prior Rampage show during the Royal Rampage match. It looks like they're setting up a House of Black vs. Allen Sting feud, but at the same time, it looks like they also might be setting up a face turn for King. The latest Wall Street Journal story on Vince McMahon doesn't appear to have much of an effect on WWE business and McMahon seems to be not bothered by anything. Dave Meltzer reported that things were business as usual at WWE Friday Night Smackdown and McMahon was running creative. One person reportedly said that McMahon was no selling everything and that he was letting everyone know he's not blinking. McMahon also reportedly said something to the effect of, have fun guys, have a great show after the production meeting. Opinions vary depending on the person backstage, but as Meltzer pointed out, nobody can imagine Vince not being there. It was also noted that most people, even people more powerful than Vince, would not have survived the allegations. Meanwhile, WWE ratings are solid and their house shows in Sacramento 
drew over 7,500 fans, according to WrestleTix. That would be the second largest crowd for a house show this year. McMahon owns the majority of the stock and the stockholders don't have the power to force him out. Furthermore, if the stockholders feel that the company would tank without Vince, that strengthens his position on refusing to step down. Brian Danielson has some good news, but don't expect to see him in the ring anytime soon because of Danielson's history of concussions. AEW President Tony Khan is not rushing to clear him. Danielson was feeling great a few weeks ago on the day of the Road Rager show, according to Khan, and then wasn't feeling so well eight days before the Forbidden Door pay-per-view. According to Dave Meltzer, Danielson is doing much better. Meltzer said the following during his appearance on Sunday night's main event. What I can tell you is Brian is fine, but he's not clear to wrestle yet, and Tony Khan is not going to rush him back. What do you think about today's news? Let us know in the comments below. Please don't forget to spear that like button, and while you're at it, put that subscribe button in a hurt lock. Once again, I'm KB the Mark, signing off. Until the next one. I started with nothing and came out of King. Came out of King. I've been the one that's been ballin' for rings. I've been the one that's been ballin' for rings. It's been me and my team and we chasing the green. Me and the team and we chasing the green. My team be the shit, we ain't ballin' for free. Ballin' for free, yeah. My team be the shit, we ain't ballin' for free.